Hello. Um, today we're going to take a quick look over uh, Microsoft Sustainability Manager. So what does it offer? What does it do? Uh, what can you do with it? And how can it help us prepare our uh, ESG reports? Uh, so the Microsoft Sustainability Manager is a product that's part of the Microsoft Sustainability Cloud product family. Uh, it's designed and intended to be used to calculate all your environmental emissions factors, uh, water water usage, waste usage, uh, and, and related numbers. Um, the way it uh, the problems that it's trying to solve is it's it's uh, one place to store all your environmental uh, related data. So you go away from all the Excel files and you store everything in, in a single uh, in a single place. What this offers you at the end is what we're seeing now on the screen. So uh, once we have all the data imported, all the system configured, we can see um, dashboards on our uh, just a very high level overview of our emissions for all, all three scopes. We can see also the revenue intensity and the amount of re renewable energy that we use and the sources for those uh, for that energy that's used. Uh, we can drill down in this report, so we can look into countries, regions, we can look at organizational units, or we can look at our manufacturing facilities. Uh, if you want to take a look at uh, a little bit deeper look into emission insights only, we have a special dashboard for that. Well, we will see uh, a detailed view on and breakdown on the emissions uh, for all three scopes. We can do an in-depth analysis to see which are the most, uh, the biggest contribution factors for specific emissions. We can see emissions based on our custom dimensions. So in this case, we are looking at uh, a, a company that manufactures coffee, and we see emissions based on, on the, the, the dimensions that were defined by uh, by uh, by this company, so we can see by coffee species, by coffee type, and if it's organic or uh, not organic coffee, we see the emissions produced by each uh, each each dimension of the product, as well as intensity, and then a tree view of of the intensity based on on the emissions as well. We can take a look at key influencers. So, what does influence our increase of emissions? What does influence our decrease of of emissions? And we can see a forecast of emissions based on the data that's available. Uh, similar to the emissions, we have uh, water usage, uh, water recycling, and water quality metrics that are here. So we import our activities in, and this data is then calculated. Similarly, as you look to the emissions factors, we also have uh, dashboards for water quantity. So this is the quantity of water we've used and return back to the environment. This is the quality of water that we've returned back to the environment. Uh, then we have forecast um, for all those factors and then some additional water-based insights. Uh, same applies to waste, where we look at waste based on different waste categories that we define. And then we see how much waste we produce, how much waste we recycle, we can also take a look at the circularity report, so how much of the material that we use is actually being recycled and reused in our products and so on. So the dashboards that we see here are analytical dashboards and they are, you can play with them real time within, within the system. What we can also do is we can export uh, reports back into, into Excel where we can say we want to have a CSRD report for emissions, we define for which year, and then we can uh, download this report in, in an Excel format. Similarly, it applies to emissions report, waste report, circularity report, and water reports. Uh, another important topic when we talk about sustainability reporting and uh, sustainability in metrics in general is our goals. So we can set our environmental goals within, within the platform itself. Uh, here we can see that we have a carbon reduction plan till 2030 with eight goals. We have not started one goal. We are on track with three. We are at risk with three. And one, one goal is already unmet. So let's take a look at the plan and see more in more detail what these goals look like. So here we see a 
uh, carbon induction plan for uh, two regions in the US and Asia Pacific. They are both on track. Uh, we see uh, a goal to reduce travel distance by 20%. This one is at risk and so forth. The nice thing is that these goals uh, can be updated either manually or by hand. So you can do each, each week, each month, you do a check-in. Uh, you create a check-in and you enter it in, or they can be updated automatically based uh, based on the data. So you don't really have to do anything. As the data comes into the system, as it's calculated by the system, the, goal, the goals will get updated. Now, these dashboards are all nice and funny, but um, the biggest challenge that we see with customers when it comes to sustainability reporting is actually gathering the data. Uh, so currently, what we've seen, uh, and that's probably the case for most, is that the data resides in some sort of Excel files that are stored in numerous uh, network shares. You have multiple versions of the Excel files, so you don't really know which data is the correct one. Um, what we can do with this sustainability manager, it gives us uh, an import functionality for the data, and it also, so uh, it, we have two options when it comes to imports. We either use the Power Query templates, which are pre-prepared templates that we can use to import data, or uh, we import data using the mapping that's provided uh, by the platform. So if we take a look at the electricity data here that we have prepared, how we can take a look at it, it's easy. Um, so we have a simple um, mapping function here. So we will say, I want to import purchased electricity data. From my destination table, I have these fields in the destination table. Let's just auto map them to our, to our source fields. Um, because I have an Excel file that has the same field names, it makes it a little bit easier to automatically map them. When this data is mapped, we can then just click here, ready for import, and the data gets ingested into, into the system as a business activity, in this case, for purchased energy. Uh, the same way, uh, the, same, the same process applies for all activities that you do. So if we take a look at carbon activities, which are what we use to calculate carbon emissions, we have carbon activities separated into three scopes. So scope one, scope two, and scope three. For scope three, some of the scope one and scope two emissions can be reused. Uh, it depends on the, uh, whether or not we're calculating upstream or downstream, uh, downstream emissions. Uh, we also see all the emissions that were calculated. So Here we see basically all the emissions calculated for all three scopes. We can export this, play with this uh, outside in Excel and so on. The same applies for water data. Another important part here is the reference data. So reference data is everything that's not, that are not business activities that generate emissions. So this can be emission factors, this can be contract instruments, this can be your suppliers, uh, business travel types and so forth. So all of this data can also be imported into the system the same way that we import the, the emission data. For some of the data, we need a data approval process in place. So we can define based on which, uh, which data definition that we have, we can define whether or not we require to have an approval process for data before the data is actually used by the system. Um, another important part is, so uh, a connectivity to external data providers. So in this case, we have uh, Ecolab, Ecovadis, uh, and Microsoft Azure uh, Impact Dashboard. So the idea behind the external data providers is that they provide you data that you can use then within the platform without you uh, doing anything on, on configuring the imports and so on. The data just becomes available when the, the, the providers make that data uh, available. So once we have all the data in, we need to start planning on how we will actually calculate the emissions. So we do this with our with the calculation models and calculation profiles. So what the calculation prop model is is um, is basically a definition of how the emissions are being calculated. So for each type of emission, we are calculating. Um, we can define a procedure for calculation of those emissions. And this is basically a simple um, editor where you can drag and drop 
um, I'm drag and drop item to find formulas, add additional steps, do do add conditional logic, and then just multiply vectors as defined here. So either you enter the formula with using power fx, or you can just um, use <coughs> predefined data fields and predefined formulas to calculate uh, to calculate the values. Once we have a um, uh, a calculation model defined. We need to define a calculation profile that actually adds to applies the calculation model on top of uh, the data that we select. Uh, what you would see here is uh, the data selection criteria, so we can define filters and then apply a calculation model on top of that data, and then uh, the emissions are being calculated using this uh, calculation profile. Uh, calculation profiles can be either executed manually or they can be executed whenever uh, data changes. Uh, an, an important thing when we like, take a look at uh, calculation profiles is are the emission factors that we use. So an emission factor tells me what the amount of emissions a unit of a specific product used is actually generating. Uh, the platform comes Pre-populated with specific uh, specific emission factors, so it comes with DEFRA factors. It comes with EPA factors. So if we take a look at DEFRA uh, 2022 fuels emissions, here we will see emission factors for uh, various fuel types. So we see emission factors for petrol, diesel, uh, aviation fuel, and so on. And if we take take a look at uh, the petrol one, for instance. Here we see that a liter of petrol is generating this, uh, this emissions. So it's generating 2.2 kilograms, 2.32 kilograms of CO2 per liter uh, and CH4 and so forth. <laughs> and at the end, we see that how many uh, CO2 equivalent uh, emissions is actually produced by a liter of, uh, liter of petrol used. Uh, these emissions are used when we calculate uh, using the calculation models and emission factors can also be linked or mapped to additional uh, additional contractual values. The idea behind this is, is especially when it comes to, uh, to electricity cost, for instance, um, uh, Different suppliers will have a different emissions factors based on how they procure the electricity they sell you, and you can link the emission factors to the um, to the contract. And then within the calculation model, we can actually say um, let's use um, let's use um, uh, let's use the the um, the emission factor from the contractual instrument type. In this case, we don't need to we, need, we don't need to create multiple different calculation models to calculate for each different contract type. But we can just say, okay, just use the contract type that's linked to, uh, to the purchased energy line that we imported, and calculate emission factor that's linked to that. If the emission factor is not found, the system will report an error, and you will be able to rectify that and rerun the calculation again. So once again, uh, once we have all this calculated, all this data will end up in all emissions. When we're calculating the emission factors, the water and waste data will end up in waste and water data. And all of that is then presented through the executive dashboards, where you can see what's happening. Um, and the goals, of course, get updated, and so you can see where you are in your uh, sustainability journey, and you can use the data to help you prepare the sustainability reports.